Hi, I'm Donna from The Masquerade, and we're going to learn how to bind an inside corner on a quilt or a placemat or some kind of small project. You use one and three eighths inch bias binding. So I took a half a yard of fabric, I opened it out, and I cut on the diagonal, a 45 degree diagonal, um, these one and three eighths inch strips. Um, when you start off <clears throat> with a half a yard of fabric, you end up with different size strips because you're starting from the corner. And that's good, we want that because we don't want to sew these together at the beginning because we want to end the seam at the outside of the circle instead of the inside corner that we're paying attention to. So let's get started. So the first step to putting this bias binding on the quilt is to prepare the quilt piece or the project. And in order to do that, we need to mark our corners. We want a quarter of an inch uh, marked from the edge and from this edge, and we want to find the point in which they meet. I can see that that's my quarter of an inch, and that's where my point is. And it falls right on that seam. And I want to do that with all of the corners. This pattern is the Impatience pattern by Quiltworks for four placemats. So the next step after you've marked the corners is to go in with a pair of sharp scissors and snip right to that point that you drew so that you end up with a V. Now we're going to take our 1 and 3 8 inch bias binding and we're going to attach it to the quilt. Now we don't want to start in a corner, we want to start out on a petal and we want to leave ourselves a tail. So I leave about four, four inches, maybe five inches, and I attach the raw edge with a quarter inch seam right to the edge of my quilt. And I'm going to stop at that point that I drew right there and put my needle in and pivot. And then I'm going to fold my project so that I end up with a straight line. Like It'll look like this underneath so that I can continue stitching along with the binding. So let me show you how that's done on the machine. So a couple of tips. You'd like to <coughs> do this with a thread that matches your binding because there'll be one stitch that shows in that corner and you want it to look like the fabric. I've got my tail at the beginning that I'm not going to stitch down. I'm going to start on the top of the curve on my quilt piece. Now my stitch length is at about 2.4 until I get in close to that that inside corner and then I'm going to want to use a much smaller stitch. 1.2 is a good length or 1. And I'm just following the edge of my quarter inch foot and I'm easing the binding around the corner. And when I get close, there's some raw edge here from that piece that was turned. And I want to make sure that gets caught. I want to make sure that stays on one side of the seam. So I'm going to hold that down there. And when I get to that point, I'll take one more stitch and I'm going to pivot. And when I pivot, I'm going to fold my quilt. Here, I'll back out a little bit. I'm going to fold my quilt in a way that I can make the seam go straight along this outside edge. And I want to make sure that I don't have any uh, folds under there, puckers or anything. And I'm just going to continue on. I'm 
I'm using a very small stitch just till I get out of that little corner and I can bring it back up to get around the edge. And I can look and I can see that my end of my binding is not going to end in the corner here. So I can keep going around this corner and then I'll add my next piece. It's nothing you can rush doing. You have to take your time around these corners. And when I get close, I want to bring my stitch length down. I'm going to bring it down to a one. And I, again, want to make sure that this little bit of raw edge is not on the other side of my seam. And I want to make sure that I stitch to that point which is right there. So I'm going to hold that spot. And then put my needle down and turn and fold my piece. so that I can get a nice straight edge. I want to make sure there's no folds under there. It's not going to come out right if you rush through this. You have to, have to make sure that everything's positioned right once you get around this corner. And then you can bring it back up to a normal length and continue on. So now I'm going to add the next piece of binding. So I'm just going to remove this from the machine. And I want my binding to be right side up. And I want to take my next piece. And it would be right side down. So from the top left to the bottom right. I want to make sure this looks nice and square. Now I'm just going to trim this seam. open. I'm just going to finger press it open. Now it's a good idea to check each one of these or work on just one of these corners at a time because you can't go back and take one out after you've done them all. So when you're ready to do a corner just stop near the top of a curve to remove it and go in and do the corner. So I pivoted on that point and it's straight across where the point was and you can see I've enclosed the little uh, ends of that seam in there and now it's time to stitch it before I turn it over. So. I want to make sure that my my point is all clipped perfectly right to the point and if there's anything excess in there I want to get it out now. I think I'm pretty pretty much in there. So now I need to clip to the point on the binding. That has to be clipped.
Oh, so what I'm going to do is fold it on the binding side so that everything is matched evenly. I'm going to trim out this little excess that's in here. So here's a tip. You're sewing your binding on and you've already clipped your spots, but you can see that it doesn't go right to the tip of the stitching right in that corner. And your scissors aren't super, super sharp. You can flatten this out and use a seam ripper just like you would a buttonhole. And you insert the seam ripper in the tip without cutting the threads. And now you're, you're snipped right to that point. And you can make sure it's the same way on the back side without cutting through the threads. Get right through your binding. And then to clean it up, you're going to do the same thing as you did before, and you're going to fold it in half, and you're going to snip it with scissors. You give yourself a nice clean edge. Now there's a nice clean V when the binding is all nice and straight. And so we can lift the binding up and fold the piece on itself. So now we'll be able to do our magic in the corner here. We'll be able to start and sew with a very short stitch to this point, pivot, and then square off the edge. So I'm going to sew a little bit on the paper. And then when I get to this point where I'm going to start getting on the fabric, I'm going to sew right along this raw edge of the quilt piece, and then I'm going to go and turn the corner and do a square corner off the edge. I'm doing this with a very short stitch, 1.2 or 1.0. When I've made it to the point there, to the edge, I'm going to take one extra stitch and then I'm going to pivot and make sure I'm going square. I can see my straight line is this way and I'm going to go square off. When you look at the back, you can see that I stitched square. And that's the magic in this corner. So at this point, you just rip the papers off. And then you open it out. And you can see that my corner is nice on the front. I'm stitched to this point and I have a locking stitch in there so it shouldn't show too much of a thread. And then it'll fold flat over onto the back. With a, ni with a nice stitched seam. So at this point, I'll just show you. When you fold down one edge, right to where the end of that seam is, and you stitch it down on your quilt, then you can fold the other edge right from that point, and stitch it down, and everything lays nice and flat. 
So I've come right back around to the beginning and I just need to snip off the end of this square like that and lay my other piece on top of it. And then I'm going to draw a line right along where that edge, that first edge is and then a half an inch away from it and then I can sew the two together. So there's the end I trimmed and here's the beginning. I'm just going to match them up nicely. I'm going to put a ruler along that edge. And I'm going to chalk it with white so you can see it. And now I'm going to make a mark a half an inch from that. And then I'm going to just trim along that one that's closer to the end. And then I can put my edges together, right sides together. And I can sew that. So they're going to overlap and hang off the edge just a quarter of an inch on each end here and here. Put a pin in to help hold it because it's kind of hard without this enough space to uh, lay it really flat very easily. So I just put a pin in and I'm going to do my quarter inch seam. There it is. So we're going to lay it down and press it open and then it's ready to put on the rest of the edge of the quilt or the project. Perfect. Now I just have to sew the edge. Finish sewing the edge.